nothing shall be a reference point for your people. What do you do when they describe you by what you have been through? But they forget to describe you by where you are going. But listen, where you are going is better and bigger and better and bigger. It's better and bigger. It's better and bigger. Your story is changing for good. There is a big difference between disease and sickness. He says, cure disease. Preach the kingdom. Heal the sick. When you want to know disease, check the words. Divide it into two. This and is. Now the word is comes from the word easy. Easy means comfort. Easy means freedom. And this means opposite. So the opposite of appointment is disappointment. The opposite of grace is disgrace. So this is means the opposite of comfort. So anything that takes away your comfort is a disease. Get ready, get ready, get ready. My blessing is coming. So hear me. Don't be jealous of my blessing. Don't be upset of my blessing. You've got to be happy for my blessing. Because my blessing shall be a reference point for your people. What do you do when they describe you by what you have been through? But they forget to describe you by where you are going. But listen, where you are going is better and bigger and better and bigger. It's better and bigger. It's better and bigger. Your story is changing for good. There is a big difference between disease and sickness. He says, cure disease. Preach the kingdom. Heal the sick. When you want to know disease, check the words. Divide it into two. This and is. Now the word is comes from the word is. Easy means comfort. Easy means freedom. And this means opposite. So the opposite of appointment is disappointment. The opposite of grace is disgrace. So this is means the opposite of comfort. So anything that takes away your comfort is a disease. Get ready, get ready, get ready. My blessing. you click on share click on share we apologize on the technical hitch that's happened we apologize we're sorry everything has been worked on god bless you let us know if the sound is okay now click on share and let us know if the sound is okay just type on the screen we can hear you or the sound is okay type on the screen. we can hear you or the sound is okay i just want you to type on the screens we can hear you or the sound is okay so we know we can start and we can move forward god bless you as you even type click on share invite people to join this evening we are still on the subject spiritual authority spiritual authority spiritual authority spiritual authority click on share invite somebody to join click on share invite somebody to join Click on share, invite somebody to join. Okay, so just let me know if the sound is okay. Just let me know if you can hear me. If you can hear me, okay. Yes, I see Brenda Brewington saying we can hear you. Okay, okay. So we are good to go. We are good to go. We are still dealing with the subject spiritual authority. And with me here is my brother, Pastor Robert. We'll be taking you through a certain rhema, a certain revelation before our father joins us. Wherever you are, click on share. We want to lift up a prayer, then we start in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We give you the praise, the glory. We thank you for starting, continuing, and ending with us. We speak not of our own, but of the Spirit, Lord Jesus. We plead the blood. We pray for open heavens and we pray for testimonies. We pray that you release your angels that will work with us concerning your authority that is spiritual, that works in the physical realms as well in Jesus' name. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Child of God, God bless you. God bless you. Click on share. Click on share. Now, I want to, I want to start something with you in the book of psalms psalm 23 psalm 23 i just want you to catch a revelation here we are talking about spiritual authority the verse one bible said and david said the lord is my shepherd i shall not want, shall not want. 
the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, this profound statement David made by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I came to understand that that, that means there are two types of shepherd in this world. That means there is the Lord, that is the Lord most high, and there is the devil as well, as, as shepherds. And the Lord is the authority in the, in, in the spiritual realms and also in the physical realms. That is why David referenced him the most high. Or that is how, why, why Bible will reference him as the most high. Now, Satan also has an authority that the Lord has given unto him and is using that authority to deceive men, to prove to men that he's, he has authority. Now, so David in the spiritual realms when he was praying came to uh, the understanding that there are two authority there are two types of authority and there is one where you put your trust in he also gives you an authority that you do not want in him and there is one that when you put your trust in him for him he doesn't give you authority but you shall want so child of god what what david is trying to say is that if you make god your authority god will give you an authority and you will not want both spiritually and physically now he continues by saying something he made a profound statement he says he makes me lie down in green pastures now this is where i want you to understand why david is saying that if god you make god your authority then god gives you authority back now jesus or god is is the shepherd and and we are the flock so when the shepherd, it is night for the, the flock to sleep, the shepherd prepare a place for the flocks to sleep. And the shepherd, after preparing the place, uh, gives authority to the flock to go and sleep. So every flock knows their sleeping position. And that is the authority of the flock and not the authority of the, of the shepherd again. Pastor Robert, are you getting what I'm trying to say? Now, if, if, if God tells you that now, move to this place and occupy the space, but I've given you power. When you get to that, pl that place, you need to take the authority. And it's not of God to come and take the authority again for you because he has given you power. So when the, when the shepherd pre prepares the place for the flock to sleep at night, the flock knows that, okay, the shepherd, the shepherd is done preparing the place and now he has given me the power to sleep. So I know that this place is comfortable for me to sleep. So all I do is that I sleep there. Then he continues to say something there. He says that he leads me beside the still waters. Now, now, if the shepherd is taking the, the flock to, to, to a place to drink off or to, to drink water, he first of all ensures that that place is safe. And if that place is safe, then now it is the duty of the flock to drink. The, the, the shepherd will not come and force the flock to, to do what? To drink. That means authority has been given to what? To the flock as well. Authority to drink, authority to eat, authority to sleep. Because the flock knows that if I am thirsty and they take me to a water that is still and I can drink, I'm okay. So now, when you have God, who is your authority? He gives unto you authority. But when you have Satan who is an authority over you, he doesn't share his authority. That is what I want you to know, somebody. I want you to know that there is no way Satan will share his authority with you. That is why even though he fell with some angels, yet still on earth here, as he is the devil, he makes them know that he's the chief devil. He makes them know that he's the chief demon. And they are under him. So he doesn't want to share what? His glory with anyone. So child of God, David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I come to let you know that if you put your trust in, in the bad shepherd, you will want. Right. Both spiritually and physically. Mm -hmm. But when you put your shepherd in the most, your, 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 your trust in the shepherd, that is the most high, you will not want. Right. Now, there is a mathematical statement we normally make. That if, if more, less divide. Right. If less, more divide. Right. Now, I want to show you something spiritual about this. Mm -hmm. Now, Bible said, and Satan waged war over the Lord in heaven. Now, he was able to gather a, a part of, of the angels. And compared to that of the Lord, his angels were what? Were, were less. And his power was what? Was less. But the Lord had the more 
angels and had the more power. So if less, then more divide. So the Lord was able to divide the agenda of the devil. So when you check in the account of Genesis chapter 11, Bible said, and there came a people that said, see, let us build for ourselves a tower that will reach heaven and let us make for ourselves a name. And Bible said, and the Lord also said, come with me, let us go and what? Confuse these people. That is division. So one way to bring the authority of Satan down is to divide by the power God has given to you. And the power of God is more than the power of the devil. So if, if less, more divide. So Satan and his people were less. So the power of God and the angels of God, that were more, divided Satan's agenda and they brought him down. Now, the second statement we make is that if more, then less divide. If more, then less divide. Now, on the earthly realm here, Satan thinks that he has the most power or the more power than human beings. So when you check the account of First John 4, 4, Bible says, and ye are of what? And ye are little children, but you have power. Greater is he that is in you than that which is of the, of the world. So in the earthly realm, Satan thinks that he has power than you and I. He has authority and dominion over you and I. He has authority more than you and I. So he thinks he's, at, he's in the advantage, he's of more. But we are less. But Bible is letting us know that though we are little children, greater is he that is in us than that which is of the, law, uh, of the world. So that means if more, Satan thinks in the earthly realm here, he is more of advantage than us because he thinks we are little, because he thinks we have no power. But the word of God is telling you and I that we have authority, that even though we are little children, even though we look less, we divide the agendas of the devil. And this is authority that the Lord has given unto us. So, child of God, I want you to know that God has given you authority. You are the authority of Christ on earth here. And God has given you the authority. And he has given you the power to do the impossible. Mm. Mm. Now, Bible said that a man came to Jesus. Mm. And Jesus spoke revelations. And this man said, ah, you were a good servant. You were a good master. And Jesus referred to him that none is good. Save one, that is the Lord. So that means our authority is of the Lord and our authority is good. Our authority is of God and our authority is good. So child of God, I came to let you know that tonight, this evening, by this revelation, exercise your authority, that is the authority of, of, of your goodness, Amen. over the authority of the, of the agenda of the enemy, that is bad. Right. Now, with, with my last revelation and and pastor robert will come in now when you check the book of jude chapter 1 verse 9 bible said i think i want to read it so that we we all follow the revelation here jude 1 9 i read it says yet michael the archangel when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a, a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. Now, what I understand here is that it is not time for you to accuse the devil. It is not time when you are praying or you are commanding in the realms and you are praying. This is not the time you are about to accuse the devil. That, hey, Satan, you have brought me down. You made me went into a way that I, a certain way that I, did, I didn't want to. This is not the time to accuse the devil. This is not the time to let the devil know that you, I am bringing you before the Lord because you've done something illegal. No. You just command by the name of the Lord, by the authority of the Lord, and Satan is gone. You rebuke Satan. You don't accuse Satan. So Bible said, and the archangel did not have time to accuse Satan that, see, you were the one that wanted to wage war in heaven and you fell. And for that matter, I am accusing you. He just said, the Lord rebuked thee. Right. So right now, one, one powerful authority you have over Satan is rebuking Satan with the name of the Lord Jesus. Bible says, at the mention of the name, every knee shall bow. Somebody will say it seems impossible. Somebody will say, okay, in this scripture that I quoted, it was the, the angel that rebuked. So how can a man rebuke? But when you check the Bible, the Bible said that Elijah is a man just like you and I. And he was able to command that it will not, rains will not hit the earth. And indeed, it didn't happen. Then he went to continue by saying, let the rains come and the rains came. So that means you have the power to, to exercise the authority. Now, somebody will continue to argue with me, but Bible said, and Jesus came on earth as a flesh, and he was able to command. He was able to rebuke, 
and he said now he is gone and he has given unto us the greater power to do the greater works so child of god this season this time is for you and i to do the greater works and we can only do that when we exercise our authority over the authority of the devil god bless you child of god as you are prepared tonight to exercise your authority as you have the the, the belief that you have an authority and as the holy spirit has erased the erroneous misconception in your mind the doubts in your mind that you do not carry authority I came to let you know it doesn't matter what you have done wrong it doesn't matter where you have gone wrong david said hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities that oh lord your spirit will dwell with me so if the spirit of god dwells with you that means you still carry authority jesus came to die for you so child of god i speak to your mind that let your mind have that renewal let the lord reset your mind that you are a child of authority that you are a child and you know your place that you are an heir to the throne if you do not know that you are an heir to the throne they will take your position god bless you child of god wow god bless you so much pastor fred God bless you, child of God, for joining us. We are still on the authority. Wow. Let everybody type on the screen right now, authority. Please make sure you type on the screen right now, authority. Type on the screen right now, authority. And I believe that as you are typing on the screen, you are, you are staring up the authority that you have in Christ Jesus. Type on the screen right now, authority, in the name of Jesus. God bless you for joining us. Well, we are still continuing with the subject. So insightful what Pastor Fred has given to us right now. And before our father comes in, I want to share just a little bit of what I found in the Bible concerning authority. That Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 7. If you look at Matthew chapter 7 verse number 29. Bible says, for he taught them. He's talking about Jesus. Bible says, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. You know, when I read this scripture, I was really excited. And this, this scripture really blew my mind because uh, Bible, uh, this, this scripture is a continuation of what Bible was talking about from chapter 5. Bible said that a great multitude followed Jesus. And when the multitude followed Jesus, Bible said, Jesus began to open his mouth to teach them. And that is where we have the Beatitudes, said, blessed be this, blessed be that. He taught a lot. He gave a lot of teachings from chapter 5 through to chapter 7. He was teaching the people. And Bible said that after he had done teaching the people, the people marveled. They were astonished as, at the teachings of Jesus. And all they could say was that, wow, this man, Jesus Christ, he is teaching us, but he's not teaching us like the scribes. What it means is that all this while, the people were used to the, the, the teachings of the scribes. They were used to the demeanor of the scribes when they were teaching them in the synagogues. But when Jesus Christ came on the scene, when he started his ministry, Bible said that for the first time he spoke to the people, for the first time he taught the people out of the scriptures, they marveled at, at his teaching. And all they could say was that, wow, this man is teaching us as someone that has authority, but he's not teaching us as one of the scribes. And my question is, what made Jesus Christ so bold? How was his demeanor when he was teaching? That the people could see a difference between his teaching and that of the scribes. And all they could say was that, wow, this man is teaching us as one that carries authority. So I realized that, ladies and gentlemen, if you have authority, number one, and if you understand the dynamics of the authority that you have, number two. And then number three, if you understand the source of your authority, your actions and your demeanor and your attitude is different from the rest. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says after he taught them, they looked at Jesus. They looked at the words that came from his mouth and they said that, wow, this man, he is teaching us as one that is having authority. And my question to you, somebody tonight is, how is the devil seeing you? 
by your attitude, by your demeanor, by your confession, by the words of your mouth. What is the testimony of your friends? What is the testimony of the devil? What is the testimony of the Lord concerning your life? Are you behaving as one that carries authority in life? Are you behaving as one that has understanding of the authority that God has given you in Christ Jesus? Because many believers are living a defeated life. Why? Because they do not have understanding of who they are in Christ Jesus. They don't even understand the kind of authority or the place that they stand or where they are even seated in Christ Jesus. And so they live defeated lives and they are running helter-skelter from the enemy. But if you understand that you have authority, if you understand the source of your authority, because our first teachings, we said that authority is delegated. Before you can walk in authority, you need to be under authority. And we as believers, we are under the authority of Jesus Christ. And if you have understanding that the source of your authority is from the King of Kings, is from the Lord of Lords, is from the one that all power belongs, then child of God, I am about to, I'm, I'm here to admonish you to pick yourself up. It is time for you to behave. It is time for you to speak. It is time for you to go about in life as one that carries spiritual authority. It is time for you to pick yourself up. This is not time for you to go under. If indeed you have authority and if indeed you understand the dynamics of the authority that you carry, it is time for you to rise up. Because when Jesus finished speaking, they looked at him and they said, Wow, this man is speaking as one that has authority. Now, this same scripture is in Mark chapter, chapter 1, verse 21. Mark chapter 1, verse 21. Um, in Mark 1, 21, the Bible says, And they went into Capernaum, and straight away on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And if you look at verse 22, it said, And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. So there should be a clear distinction between you, a child of God, that carries spiritual authority and somebody of the world. There should be a clear distinction. When you appear on the scene, people should see you and people must, 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 must realize and people must know. That this one is a child of God and this one does not behave as the people of the world. He doesn't behave. He doesn't conform to the status quo because this one carries authority and his demeanor. The Bible said he taught them. So from the words of his mouth, from the words of his mouth, they realize and they notice that this man carries authority. And straight away, Jesus Christ put this authority that he had to use. Because when you go down the scripture, the Bible said that right there in the synagogue, there was a man that had unclean spirit and this spirit began to manifest. The Bible said this spirit began to speak and said that what have we to do with you, Jesus Christ, that son of God. And the Bible said that Jesus Christ, a man that had understanding of the authority that he carried, Bible said that he rebuked the unclean spirit and immediately the unclean spirit complied. Anytime you understand who you are in Christ, anytime you have understanding of the authority you have in Christ, when you speak, situations obey. What is the unclean situation that is happening in your life? What is the situation that has been tormenting your life, your family, your loved one? What is the ill situation that is going on around your life? And that situation has been making noise for far too long. But when you have understanding of the authority you have in Christ, all you have to do is to exercise that authority. How do you exercise it? You look at that situation in the face. Look at that barren situation. Look at that business that is collapsing. Look at that marriage that is failing. Look at that career that is coming down. Look at your grades in school that is failing. Look at that sickness, that disease. Look at it eyeball to eyeball and exercise your authority in Christ. Speak to that situation and that situation will have no option than to comply. The Bible said that the evil spirit, the unclean spirit came out of him. And if you read Verse 25, the Bible says, And Jesus rebuked him. That is what Pastor Fred was talking about. That any time you have understanding of spiritual authority, you know that you have the authority to rebuke. You do not negotiate. Thank you, Papa. You don't have time for negotiation. 
you don't have time to sit with the situation and it's like the situation is trying to, you know, bluff on you. No, 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 no. There is no room for negotiation. Kings do not negotiate. And hear me, you are a king. You don't have room for negotiation. It is not time to negotiate with the issues of life. Especially when you are dealing with stubborn situations. You don't have time to negotiate. It is time to exercise your authority in Christ. It is time to speak to that situation. It is time to command that situation. The Bible says that he rebuked the unclean spirit. And immediately, immediately, anytime you exercise authority, you experience the miracle of what we call the immediate reaction. Anytime you exercise spiritual authority, and this was evidence in, in the life of Jesus Christ. Anytime Jesus Christ was confronted with an issue, he, he will exercise authority over that issue, and the, and the issue does not wait. It does not wait. Immediately, something happens, and there is a turn around. There is a turn around. So tonight, as you exercise your spiritual authority over the issues of life, I see an immediate turn around in your life. Amen. Even in the name of Jesus. Amen. I see an immediate breakthrough. I see an immediate chain reaction. I see an immediate miracle, an immediate testimony that is happening for you, that is happening for your family, that is happening for your loved ones, even in the name of Jesus. I will, I will leave my last point. He says, and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Now, why or how come the unclean spirit came out of, of, of the man? Because in verse 25, these were the exact instructions that Jesus Christ gave to the unclean spirit. He says, hold, hold thy peace. That is Mark 1, 25. He says, hold thy peace and come out of him. These were the specific instructions that Jesus Christ gave to the unclean spirit. And because Jesus Christ was not negotiating with the unclean spirit, the unclean spirit had no option than to comply. And he didn't comply with, with margins of error. The exact same things that Jesus Christ said, those were, that was the, was the exact thing the evil spirit did. And Bible says in verse 27 that, and they were all amazed. In so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, He says, What is this thing? What is this thing? They haven't seen some before. He says, What new doctrine is this? And they asked, For with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits. And they said that they do obey him. Kadalabahataya. He said, With authority he commands. With authority he commands. And the evil spirits obey. The people are amazed. They are saying that what is this? What, what, what kind of doctrine is this? What kind of man is this? Anytime you see a man and you marvel at their, their achievements in life. Anytime you see somebody that you admire so much. That has gone higher than you in life. It is a sign that that person has understanding of what they have. And what they carry. And that person has exercised it to their advantage. That is why we have come to open your eyes and to give you understanding of who you are. That it is not just your man of God that is anointed and powerful, even though God has given them as leaders over the church. But God also expects you to come to the place that you can also exercise your authority. And then the man of God will only come in when you need enforcement. But for many believers, they are so down that at every, you know, at every wink of the enemy, they run helter skelter. And that is living a defeated life as a believer. This is the time for you to rise up. It is a time for you to use your authority. This is a time for you to exercise what you have. Exercise dominion that has been given unto you. And hear me, when you do that, the enemy will have no option than to comply. And not just the enemy, but everything that you expect. If it is good health that you are expecting. If it is financial freedom that you are expecting. As you exercise your authority in the name of Jesus. Hear me. Your expectations will not be cut short. You will receive what you have to the praise and to the glory of the name of Lord. God bless you so much. Mm. My God. That's right. Mm. 
My God. Jesus. That's right. My God. My God. Because they carry the same spiritual authority, I think they can still hear. Because they carry the same spiritual authority, whilst you are rebuking this, you now rebuke. Just type on the screen, I rebuke any, any, any negative spirit, I, any, any trouble, leave my life. Just make that declaration. You are spoken. Let us cause the world to come into life. Let's make a public spectacle of the world. In Jesus name. Let me click on share, click on share. My God, my God, I rebuke. My God, now in the name of Jesus, now in the name that is above every other name, we exercise our authority in Christ Jesus and we rebuke every foul spirit, every foul spirit from your mother's family, every foul spirit from your father's family, every unclean spirit from where you live, in your neighborhood, where you work, be rebuked, be rebuked, be rebuked in the name of Jesus. Any spirit that has been assigned against your life, any spirit that has been released to monitor your destiny, any spirit that has been assigned to police your life, tonight in the name of Jesus, tonight by superior authority, we rebuke you now. We rebuke you now. We rebuke you now. We rebuke you now. In the name of Jesus. Anybody that has been taken possession of by a demonic power, anybody that is operating under the influence of a demonic spirit, right now in the name of Jesus, we declare that influence has come to an end. Be rebuked in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every force of darkness around your life. In your house right now, we rebuke that spirit. We rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Now hear me. Any unclean situation any evil situation that has taken root in your life and it is bearing root to your disadvantage today in the name of jesus let that situation bow down let that situation bow down any health crisis health challenges that you are going through any financial crisis that is happening in your life we rebuke that situation we rebuke that situation we rebuke that situation, rebuke that situation. family crisis i said family crisis some of you, your families have no, no peace. Jesus. Today, Jesus. in the name of Jesus, Jesus, let that situation bow. Let that situation bow. Jesus. Wherever you are watching me from, Jesus. I rebuke that evil situation. Jesus. That joblessness. I said that joblessness. That barren situation. That single life. We rebuke it now. We rebuke it now. We rebuke it now. In the name of Jesus, we command the turn around. From today, you will experience a turn around. We rebuke the drought. I said we rebuke the drought. In the name of Jesus, receive good news now. Receive good news. We activate it. We command it to come to pass in your life. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus, let it come to you. Let it come to you. Let it be credited to your account. I see good news being credited to your account. Even in the name of Jesus. I see the goodness of God. Hear me. I see a sweet goodness of Jehovah. Coming to you now. Coming to you now. Coming to you now. I hear restoration. You are being restored. By the power of God. By the message of God. There is a restoration. Coming to you now. Coming to you now. Coming to you now. The days of the locust. The days of the palmer worm. The days of the canker worm. The days of the caterpillar. They are coming to an end. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let your wasted years. Let your wasted days. Let your wasted months. Let your wasted money. Be restored right now. Be restored right now. Any organ of your body. That has been wasted by the enemy. That has been wasted by cancer. That has been wasted by COVID. That has been wasted by malaria. We rebuke it now. And we declare divine restoration. Receive good health. I said receive good health. Even in the name of Jesus. Now by divine authority. I declare. That your life is making progress. I said your life is making progress. 
when the unclean spirit came into contact with Jesus, he had suffered many years, but when he encountered Jesus, by divine authority, his life turned around, and he began to make progress. Receive it right now. I said receive it right now. Receive it right now. The days of stagnation, the, the days of setback, the days of failure, the days of rise and fall, they are coming to an end. I said they are coming to an end. Not tomorrow. I said not tomorrow. Not an hour from now, but right now. I said right now. I said right now. I said right now. In the name of Jesus. Fire. 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 That's so powerful. God bless you, Pastor Robert. God bless you, Pastor Fred. And God bless everybody for watching in Jesus' name. I came to just let you know that we are walking under spiritual authority. Um, the man of God just um, said to me that, Prophet, since we started dealing with spiritual authority, we've been getting this technical fall to the other. And I said, yes, there are some subjects that the moment you begin to teach, hell becomes uncomfortable. You put hell on the edge because there are secrets that children of God got to know. And our assignment is to let you know who you are in context of who God is. You know, when you know who you are in relation to who God is, you know how to exercise authority. And I've told you anything you see in the Old Testament, it was just a reflection of the New Testament to come. The Old Testament is New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is Old Testament revealed. So anything you see about the old Adam, it was a reflection of the new Adam. So anything you saw old Adam couldn't do, the new Adam, the second Adam, the last Adam, which is Jesus Christ was able to do. So whatever blocked the old Adam, the new Adam, Jesus was able to do. And the good news is that whatever Jesus Christ was able to do, you and I will be able to do it. So the writer says, I can do all things through Christ. The reason why you can do it is because Christ was able to do it. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He strengthens you because he's been able to do it. He's been able to get there before because he knows the end from the beginning. This season, I release this spiritual authority over you. And today we have taught you, and this season, we've taught you how to empower yourself, how to move into a place where you shall walk and enjoy the grace of God. I want you to type on the screen, I carry spiritual authority. I carry spiritual authority. I carry spiritual authority. And by virtue of that spiritual authority you carry, let there be peace. One particular thing, seriously, Pastor Robert, is that authority brings peace. Because anytime there is curiosity, when the person with authority steps in, the authority, the person in authority, or the person, the figure with authority, will speak and there is peace. So authority works hand in hand with peace. And today, let there be peace. But I just type on the screen, I carry spiritual authority. And you enjoy that mercy, you enjoy that grace of God as never before in Jesus' name. Because Jesus has made us to understand that right now we are united in him. We are together in him. We are in him and he is in us. And in the morning we made you to understand that Jesus Christ is inside of us. So he says Christ which is inside of you, that is the hope of your glory. So when I have Christ, I have glory. And you enjoy and move in that purpose, move in that strength and move in that grace in Jesus name. As we're speaking right now, I speak into your house and I speak into your family. Anybody watching right now for some time now, when you get home, you feel darkness, you feel gloom, you feel doom, you feel heaviness. Today, let that heaviness leave your house. Let that heaviness leave your bedroom. Let that heaviness leave your compound. Let that heaviness leave your car. I move you out of that place. May God order your steps. May you be empowered. In the name of Jesus, enjoy what is great, enjoy what is good. Espe
experience the supernatural authority from God, receive that exousia that will cause you to have an impact in your world, an impact in your life. When you have authority, you control your climate, you control your environment, you control your atmosphere, you control your surroundings, you control the circumstance, and you dictate to the circumstance what you want to experience. You have the ability to dictate it. And today, I release that power, I release that authority, May you control your environment. Type on the screen, I carry spiritual authority. I carry spiritual authority. And I believe that by the mercies and by the grace of God, you will see the benefit of that authority in Jesus' name. You know, you know God loves us so much. He loves us so much that when you check the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, when man ate from the fruit something shouldn't happen it was eve who tasted the fruit first and when eve tasted adam could have had the opportunity to tell eve as for me i will not taste it but eve tasted and adam said eve you are my responsibility because when eve was made God made Eve Adam's responsibility that right now this is your wife, so take care of her. So when Eve did it, Adam knows that right now Eve has faulted. And because Eve has faulted, when God comes right now, Eve will be at fault. And Adam said, no, I'm the one in charge of Eve. So Eve has faulted, let me also eat it so that when God comes, God will have to come and confront me so that Eve will now be behind me. So, this is how it was. I'm teaching you about spiritual authority. So, right now, this is how it was. Can the media person help me? Let me show you. Good. Okay, yeah, it's okay. So, right now, let's say, Pastor Fred, you are Eve. So, you have tasted of the fruit. So, let's say, this is the fruit. This is the fruit. So, when Eve tasted... And said, my husband tried. Adam, hear me, Adam could have said, no. You better take your own responsibility. So if God had come, God would have gone straight to Eve. And all sunshines would have gone to Eve. But Adam knew that Eve is my responsibility. So Eve, if you have taken it, I know you are fault. But right now, let me also take it. So when God comes, God will not locate Eve. But God will locate Adam. And God will have the issue with Adam. So it's the same thing Jesus did for us. That we in the world, we were Eve. We committed the sin. But on the, on the cross of Calvary, Jesus said, I've taken all your sin. So my father, my father, why are you forsaking me? So God was not forsaking Jesus because he saw the sins that were on Jesus. So the Bible said, he himself knew no sin, but he became sin. So he himself didn't eat the fruit, but he became the one who ate the fruit. Because it was Eve who ate the fruit. But he says, he himself, Philippians chapter 2, right? Philippians chapter 2. He himself knew no sin, but he became sin. Let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. I'm teaching you about authority. So it became his responsibility. Let's go. When God has given him a name that's above every other name. Okay. Let's go there. Philippians chapter 2. My God. Type on the screen. Jesus is my authority. Let's go. Jesus is my authority. My God. Jesus is my authority. Jesus is my authority. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's go. Who being in the form of God? So Jesus, this is Jesus, this is Adam. Thought, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That's right. Even if he had tried to be like God, it was not robbery because it was the truth. That's right. but made of no now he took all, he stripped all his reputation. Now he became like a servant. And, was made in the of and he became like man. 
so wait so right now god became man so right now jesus is like god so god became man jesus and man became like god let's continue now because he became like a man he humbled himself that's right that's right yeah that's right that's right at the mention of the name every knee will bow start from three four and come in and let's see something wow so he now said eve has done it but if i pull away eve will, got the, will get the problem so let me stand in front of eve so jesus christ became like us so that what was supposed to come to us he took it away and in the same way too if he got the opportunity and he got the grace and he got the authority okay let's go where was it galatians corinthians second corinthians let's go 521 let's go read it man of god okay okay if you want to read it you will be here yeah yeah let's go yeah that's right That's right. He, he, Jesus became sin. Who knew no sin? He himself didn't do any sin. That he might be made the righteousness of God. That's right. In him. So he himself didn't sin. That's right. But he became sin. Mm -hmm. So that you and I can become righteous. That's right. So first Adam took the responsibility. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said, I will also take the responsibility. But the issue is that the first Adam, when the first Adam took the responsibility, Eve was not exonerated. Eve didn't become righteous. But when the first Adam took our sin, we became righteous. So out of that, because he had to take our sins, so that when he now received the authority, we too will become partakers. Because if the sin was still on the church and authority was coming, we wouldn't have received. But because he took the sin away, now we were without blemish. We were without fault. So we too, the same authority passed through us. Child of God, there is something that you carry. My assignment is for you to know there is something inside of you. And number two, in the morning, I made you to understand that you don't just didn't appear over here. You have always existed as a spirit. You only came on this earth to acquire this body. But for your spirit has already been there. You are as old as the foundations of the earth. So it says, before you were formed in the womb of your mother, I knew you. This one doesn't make sense. Before you were formed, before the sperm and the ovaries connected and became an embryo and became fetus and started growing into the first, second, third trimester, he already knew you. This is so powerful. So David said, oh God, you saw my unformed body. Psalm 139. Oh God, you saw my unformed body. Let's go. Psalm 139. You saw my unformed body. I'm taking you somewhere before we go to some prayers. Because I want to move you to that place. I want your mind to get to that level. That anytime you are outside, anytime you are inside, you walk with your chest out because you carry authority type on the screen i carry authority and we'll give you announcement of for church openings okay so don't worry at all i know you've been waiting and you have you're on the edge we'll let you know let's go i carry authority yes Psalm 139. just just pick the place i see oh god you saw my unformed body so god saw sister brav uncle auntie listen god saw your unformed body your unformed body the body that was not formed he saw you psalm 139 is there he says you saw my unformed body yeah yes 
that's i think verse 16 your your eyes did see my substance that's right yeah read aside yeah that's what that is the unfound body your eyes did see my substance continue that's right in your book, all my members were written. Which in continuance were fashioned. That's right. Yet there was none of them. That's right. It's so powerful. Your eyes, they saw my, they see my substance. You saw my unformed body. So you can check the NIV or the KGV. You know, so God saw you. So it says before you were formed, before you were formed, he already knew you. Yes, the NIV says, yes, NIV says it says, your eyes saw my unformed body. Your eyes saw my unformed body. So, Pastor Robert, before you became this body, God's eyes saw you. So, now my question is, where did he see you? Mm. <laughs> Listen, let, let's pause here for a minute and let's think. Let's think. I like people to always think. Mm. Pastor Robert, Pastor Fred, yes, this body, before it was formed, he said he saw you. So where? We can end the broadcast here. Where? He saw my unformed body. Where? Because I was with him. Your spirit, hear me, your spirit was never corrupted with sin. Your spirit had already always been genuine. But when he came on earth, that it was corrupted. So our, our spirit, soul, connected to God. That's why, hear me, when God breathed, when God breathed, into his nostrils, the breath of life, a man became a living soul. So when God breathed, life came into you. You had the spirit and the soul. So it means you were already in God. You were already in God. You were in him. If you were in him, you were with him. If you were with him, you were by him. So anytime you go back to God, you are not going back to God as a new person. You are returning to him. That's why when somebody dies, you say, and the spirit has returned. Where did they dead return? Clap your hands and bless the name of the Lord. And the spirit has returned. Return. Re, re, repeat. Go backwards. And he says, I will restore. You were there, so he's restoring you. He says, renew. You had it before, so he's renewing it for you. So even a sinner, hear me, you don't introduce a sinner to God. You reconcile a sinner to God. Because the sinner used to be with God. So someone say, I want to introduce Jesus to you. They already had Jesus. So you only re re reconnect them back to Jesus. Reconcile a nation back to God. Because everybody has an affinity to know their creator. Everybody has an affinity to have a spiritual being. Because you are a spirit being. You get to that point. You don't introduce. So the body, body God's son, he returned home. So all of us were like the prodigal son, but we knew this is our father's house. So let me go and enjoy the value of the father's house. Where is the father's house? The father's house is my savior's house. You carry authority. So before you were formed, before the foundations of the earth, he already knew you. Sister, he knew you. So you are as old as God's first thoughts. Now let me break it down and pray for somebody. Now watch this. So he knew you. He was chosen. We were chosen in Christ 
before the foundations of the earth. So we were with him. So you are not 40 years, you are not 45, you are not 41, you are not 39, you are not 35, you are not 30, but you are as old as God's first thoughts. So right now, um, there was a heresy in the early church by one guy by the name of Origen. And Origen's theory was this. Origen said, all souls existed independent of God, which is wrong. When he says all souls existed independent of God, then where did the souls existed? Souls existed in God. If it's not in God, then we don't have the soul. Because he breathed in us the breath of life. So the soul was in him and he put on us. So origin was wrong. So another theologian with the inspiration of the Lord by the name of St. Gregory of Nyssa, he now came to counter origin's argument that all souls, uh, origin said all souls existed independent of God. And, and St. Gregory said it's wrong. And St. Gregory now made a statement. He says, all souls existed in God. And all souls are in God. Because when God taught his first thought, his first thinking, he taught all his thoughts at the same time. Let me explain. When God taught his first thinking at that, let me make the universe. He didn't be like, let me make universe, and after making the universe, let me make the sun, and after the sun, let me make man. When he now said, let me make universe, man was already in his thoughts. So, so, so listen to me. When God was making the apple tree, he knew that man was in his mind because man will eat the apple tree. Oh my God, my God, my God. So God... God, God doesn't take, God doesn't take progressively. So there's somebody watching me right now. Right now you are in pain. You are in sickness and you are thinking of God. If you give me the job, then after the job, you will heal me. No. When God was giving you the job, he had your healing in mind. God mindset he's thinking about you is all together he doesn't think this one and after that he says oh okay like how they make iphone like you are there iphone 11 will come let's say iphone 9 okay iphone iphone 11 that's iphone 9 iphone 8 iphone 10 and buy okay so let's say I, iphone 4 iphone 5 iphone 7 but let me tell you something when they were making iphone 7 they already knew iPhone 11. That's right. It's not that they, they sat down. Uh, listen, iPhone 14, it is there. That's right. When they, were, they started making, they had the plan. So, they, so although you are seeing it as progressive, they've made the plan there already. Right. So the day God was making the tree, he was making lion and tiger. He knew that it is for the pleasure of man. When God was putting fish in the sea, God knew that somebody would like to chew adrenaline coin. So God knew that man would need it. So God's first thought, every thought was together. So St. Gregory counted origin and said God's mind was together. So listen, when you were getting married, it's not like God wanted to give you marriage then later God will have a meeting and say, let me plan and give her a child. No. When you were getting married, when God planned your marriage, he had already planned your children. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, by the reason of spiritual authority, may God remember you, receive everything that you need in the name of Jesus. Enjoy God's mercy. Enjoy God's grace. Receive the goodness of God. Let the angels of God be on assignment. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. So listen. So example. When Adam was fallen. And God wanted Jesus to come and redeem. God had, God had already made the plan there already. God already had the plan. That the plan is Calvary. It wasn't like after man fell, then God said, Ah! He... So right now, what do I do? Oh, where is Jesus? Jesus. God knows. 
So St. Gregory of Nice, and he says, when God taught his first thoughts, he taught all thoughts at the same time. And all his thoughts were in his great thought. And the great thought is the I am thought, which means I am God. So because he's God, all thoughts were taught at the same time. God doesn't think progressively. He thinks he's taught at the same time. So your full package is inside. So example, God's thought about you is not that he'll give you the visa. Then after the visa, you have to go to him to look for uh, plane ticket. And plane ticket, where you live abroad, you start, he'll start planning for you. Then uh, how you can get papers abroad. When you started applying for visa, he had already made a provision for you. The time he gave you the visa, he had planned for the plane ticket. He had planned for where you stay. He had planned for your papers. He had planned for the day you come back to Ghana again. God taught all things at the same time. So when God was making the ma mahogany tree, my God, I love the word of God. When God was making the mahogany tree, he knew that this mahogany tree would be needed by man. And man would need it to plan to do the uh, uh, carpentry or furniture. So when God was making it, he knew that I'm making this for man. You know, like after God made it, they say, ah, this one, what, what will we do it for? So let me make man so that man will enjoy it. He already knew. So although we see it as progressive, but God make all things at the same time. Because he says, in the evening and the morning, the first day, check this one. The evening and the morning, the first day. The evening and the morning, the second day. The evening and the morning, the third day. The evening and the morning, the fourth day. So, okay, so somebody say, okay. So, he made this one first day, second day, first day. Oh, yeah. He took time to do all these different times, but he already had a picture. He already had a picture. That's why he says, thousand years is like one day. And one day is like thousand years. So in, in, uh, in 6,000 years, let's say it's like it's in eternity. So in his mind, he had already planned everything in eternity for everyone. And his assignment was to give you do, dominion and power. So when God made man, look at this. When God made man, I'm about to say something right now that will cause you to be happy. So uh, you, li you, you like what I'm about to say right now. So do you know something? Just click on share. Just click on share. And just type on the screen, God loves me. I'm about to tell you something right now. Let's go. Type on the screen. Click on share. And type on the screen, God loves me. Before we will connect to the OC with Pastor, Pastor Francis. In the name of Jesus. Wow. God is amazing. God is amazing. God is amazing. God is amazing. I will also give you opportunity to give, okay? We'll give everybody the opportunity to give. Today you are giving into authority. Now, this, this is the good news. When God made man on the sixth day, on the seventh day, God called it a day of rest. Everybody get it again? God made man on the sixth day. Then on the seventh day, God said the day is called Sabbath. Sabbath means sanctified, holy, or rest. So when God made man, man's first day on earth was a day of rest. Okay, we, we check, check, check it again. You know, God has made one, two, three, four, five, six. So he made you on six day. Let's say six day is Saturday. And the Sabbath day is Sunday. And the day you came on earth was Saturday. The next day, God called it a day of rest. So God made you that you wake up to a day of rest. So God wants you to have rest. Wow. Listen to me. I said, God wants you to have a day of rest. Since you were born, have you rested in peace before? And listen to me. Rest in peace is not the rest in peace. That is only when you die, rest in peace. No. You are supposed to rest in the peace of God. 
the curiosity is too much the battles are too much you went through battles in your infancy your father and your mother went to divorce there were issues anti stepchildren this issue happened job employment education you only wrote you wrote exam three times you failed the first time you went for read medias when you even applied for university first time they didn't pick you all stress you got job issues you got relationship the guy frustrated you so all your life if you check you've not seen you've not seen peace and rest but by authority i came to pronounce peace type on the screen i receive 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 peace i receive peace i receive peace so if you sometimes sometimes if we check the sum total of our lives see that our lives have been revolving around struggles you know just just today that i went to my school group that i saw that they have they nominated me in millennium excellence award in the category now the category is very heavy <laughs> the category is heavy i didn't know somebody put on there they said let's let's put, vote for our prophet but it's very heavy it's under motivation religious and the people there are heavy Archbishop, Kwanchankra, Pastor is to plenty, plenty. <laughs> so this one, I will lift up my hands and give to. I will lift up my hands unto the hills. From where is coming my help? Amen. This one, I, I lift my hands. I give, I give the respect out. Amen. Amen. So, so this one, I'm not doing, going to put it for people to vote for me. Let other people vote. I saw it on my school group. They did put it on that. I don't even know. I don't know. They didn't know it has come up uh, uh, um, uh, um, more than one month. I didn't even know. Maybe that's why God didn't let me see. Well, Pastor Francis said, powerful revelation. Great. Yeah. So look at this one. We woke up to a day of rest. And hear me? And man's first day on earth. Uh, this is the last thing that Pastor Francis will come on. Everybody get this one. Man was made on sixth day. God rested on seventh day, the last day. And get this revelation. Man's first day on earth was God's last day. Get it again. We have first day second day up to seventh day so seventh day is the last day and god made man on the sixth day so your first day which is on the seventh day your first day on earth was god's last day do 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 get it so if your first day is god's last day do you know the meaning I said, if your first day is God's last day, I like what I'm about to say. Oh my God, I like it right now. Just click on share. I like what I'm about to say. I like what I'm about to say. Click on share even right now. If my first day is God's last day, then it means anytime I go through trouble, the first day of my trouble, God has already seen the last day of my trouble. Wow. I'm repeating again. It means when I go through any crisis, thinking is my first day of going through, God has already seen the last day of it. Because my first is God's last. So sometimes, if you put me at last, God will put me at first. And if you put me at first, God is now pushing someone in something also at last. Oh my God, my God. Listen, I speak in Jesus' name. You are going to see the last end of your trouble because of your authority. Now, I want you to actually type on the screen, the last day of my trouble. The last day of my trouble. Let's go. The last day of my trouble. I love the word of God. I like mysteries. I like to know the deep things of God. Because Jesus Christ said when the farmer went to put down the seed, signifying the word of God, some brought out 30-fold, 
60 fold and 100 fold. So the same word of God, if you are not careful, you always be at the level of 30 fold. And you all, some people will always be at the level of 60 fold and some people will be at 100. Me, I want to be at 100. So the same, if you call it because this 30, 60 fold and 100 fold, it was on the good grounds. Right. It's serious. Oh. This is not the ones that fell on the roadside. Even on the good grounds, some made 30, some made 60, some made 100 and still on the good grounds. This is not on the background. So on the good ground, some made 30, 60, and 100. So even on the good ground, you need to still grow. There is somebody watching right now. Just type on the screen. This is the last day of my trouble. And we will pray for you right now. Then Pastor Francis will be called on. So Pastor Ezekiel, get ready for Pastor Francis. Right now, in Jesus' name. Pastor Fred, I want you to give people the opportunity to connect on the altar. The opportunity today. I don't know who is going through issue, but I just feel that today is going to be your day of rest. And the day where the troubles have to come to an end. They've got to be a last day in Jesus. Pastor Fred, release somebody right now. Somebody watching right now, this is your opportunity to go on the altar. And your life will never be the same. Let it flow. Child of God, God bless you. God bless you so much. This is the last day of your situation. And you need to connect it with your seat on the altar so that you would see no trouble. So I take you through the ways that you can connect your seat to the altar. I take you through the ways that you can connect your seat to the altar. So those of you in the motherland Ghana, you can do so with the mobile money app. And the number is the number 0245-641027. 0245-641027. And those of you in the foreign lands can do that through the following ways. Cash app. Power of Worship 1. Cash up. Power of Worship 1. 1 as in the numerical symbol 1. And also through the internet. www.danielamwating.net www.danielamwating.net Out of God, I take you through the processes again. It is time for you to connect on the seat, on the altar, your seat. And I want you to give your seat an assignment that my seat, this is the last day of my trouble. I see it no more. For rest is has come to me. So child of God, I take you through the process where you can connect onto the altar and meet the Lord, deal with your issues in Jesus' name. So those of you in the motherland, Ghana, you can do so with the mobile money app and the number is the number 0245-641027. 0245-641027. And those of you in the foreign lands can also do that through the following ways. Cash up, that is power of worship one. Cash up, power of worship one, one as in the numerical symbol one, and also through the internet, www.danielamwating.net, www.danielamwating.net. God bless you as you donate, as you put your seed on the altar. Your life will not be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. That's so powerful. Is Pastor Francis available? We bless God for this wonderful time. And um, you carry something. You have been on the thought of God. You have been on the mind of God continuously. And this mind of God will continue to be available around you. Can somebody talk to me? You know, you've been on the mind of God. And listen, just go and give. I'm about to pray for somebody. Amen. Can I get feedback? I speak in the name of Jesus. I release the mercy of God. I release the grace of God. Let there be peace. Amen. Let there be deliverance. Jesus. I came against every issue. Jesus. I came against every crisis. Jesus. Let God arise. Jesus. May every enemy be scattered. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, wherever you are, just click on share. And uh, because the questions are plenty, I think he will, give, he will just give us the first two questions. Then we, tomorrow we'll continue. And also, he also pray with us. And also, um, he will, you know, he has any revelation to tell us. He will, he will tell us, okay, so you can let him know, please. Um, so we bless God for this wonderful time. Zip, tell Ezekiel for me, okay. We bless this wonderful time. And may God empower you. Man's first day on was God's last day. The seventh day was God's last day. And it was man's first day. So you think... You just step in a crisis today, your first day. God has already seen the last day of it. And the last day of it 
is the end of it. I said the last day of it is the end of it. Remember you. Now I want to pause here to declare a word of a prayer of intercession. I want to use somebody as a point of, I just pray that anybody that is watching right now that you have a loved one that is under attack, a loved one that is going through any problem, a loved one going through any crisis, a loved one that is struggling, a loved one in any issue, let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. May God remember. May, may God remember. Let there be deliverance. Anybody, whether it's your friend, it's your family, a colleague, who is going through any challenge, your son, your daughter, your husband, friend, fiancé, partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, may God bless them. May God deliver them. May God touch their lives. May all things work together for their good. May everything work well for them in Jesus' name. Whatever has been designed, whatever has been planned, it will not work. It will not stand. Let there be a massive change. Amen. A massive turnaround. Amen. May today become the beginning Jesus. of changes. Amen. May today become the beginning Jesus. of major changes. Amen. Right now I intercede. Jesus. Right now I intercede. Jesus. Right now I intercede. Jesus. Let God arise Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. As Fred, talking about spiritual authority and all this, you know, how... God's first thought had every thought in place. He had everything in place. So do you know that the day they were anointing Saul to become a king, God already had David in, in mind. Mm. Mm. It's very serious. May today become the beginning of changes. not connect okay may god arise if you look at you, you made a comment that when when adam when god formed adam he had already made provision for jesus christ and if you read uh, revelation 13 verse 8 it says and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So it is not 2,000 years ago that we always say that Jesus Christ was killed. Before. Long time. That's right. Wow. In order for you to confirm that the blood was even available, I told you whatever Adam did, whatever Adam did, it was a reflection. Now I just get this revelation, very simple revelation. It's very easy, very easy to catch. It's for free. Get it? You know, the lamb was slain. The lamb, the sheep, the goat, was killed before the foundations of the earth. Even before Adam came to being, it, he was slain. Now, let's, let's, you know, whatever is being said, it needs to be shown. It needs, it needs to prove. So when Adam committed the sin, the Bible said, and they took the skin of animals. To cover themselves. Before you take the skin of an animal, you need to kill the animal. The, you know, so you know, so the, the Bible has quotes. The, the Bible didn't say they killed animals. It said they took the skin of animals. And before you can get skin of animals, when you go to the abattoir and you see the skin of the animals, in the skin of animals you get that the animal has to be dead. Zips, am I saying the truth? So they kill the animal, slaughter the animal, and they get a skin. And the Bible says, and Adam, they covered themselves in the clothing of animals, which means the animal was killed. So it was a reflection of what's yet to come. Listen to me. God loves you so much. That's why he has given you the spiritual authority. May you walk in that grace. May you walk in that power. May you experience that anointing in the name of Jesus. Now we're about to release three different prayers. Pastor Fred, I can, think, I can see one. So you have something to say. Then Pastor Fred, Robert will release a prayer. Will release a prayer. Pastor Robert, Fred will release. Then we call it a day. I think it's not connected yet. Yes, sir, Papa, when you were talking, you said that a thousand days before the Lord is one day. Yes. And then you made mention that man's first day was on the Sabbath day. So that means 
the thousand years that man went through struggle, the, the, that, that was one day in the, in, in the sight of the Lord. Okay. So in the following day, that is the first day for man, mm -hmm. God created him on the sixth day. So he had gone through the thousand years. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, that was rest. It was the first day. So child of God, this shows that you have gone through a lot of issues, mm -hmm. so many years. But one day, that day that you are waiting for, it's, an, it's on the calendar of the Lord. And the Lord will not let it miss you. Wow. The day God will break you through is on the calendar of God. So you are trying to say that you can go through hell for many years. Yes, sir. But only one day can change it. Yes, sir. Say it again, say it again, say it again, say it again. Now, re rephrase it like how I said so that they will get it. Okay. okay. What you said was full of revelation. Yes, sir. So rephrase it very simple. You can yeah. go through hell for many years, mm. but one day mm. can change the whole place. Mm. Powerful. Mm. So, child of God, you can go through a lot of issues for many days, many years, but one day God will change your situation. Wow. One day, the Bible said, and Abraham went through the expectancy for 25 years. So on, he went through it for 25 years, but one day God came, came through for him. So child of God, wherever you are, God is coming through for you. That day shall surely come. That day that you marry is coming. That day that you become the, a billionaire, is, that day that you would, you, would, you would give birth to that child is coming. Hannah was, was, was barren for so many years, but that day that the Lord remembered her came to pass. It is just a day, and it's a day of rest. Wow. Amen. That's amazing. God bless you. God bless you. Nikki Teresa, I see that you've given your cast up. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, Pastor, Pastor Francis, God bless you. Can you hear Pastor Francis? Yes, please, I'm here. Please help us. How can we get indirect? Okay. Um, speak to us about the spiritual authority. You know, I know you have something to tell us. I see that you are typing on the screen, deep revelation, deep revelation, deep revelation, so that tomorrow we'll really get time for the, this thing. Let it flow. Man of God. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I want to salute all the men of God who, who, who are joining in this um, broadcast. Um, I'm very grateful for um, the opportunity. Um, if, if we are to, it gives us a lot of, a lot of meanings. One of it has to do with legal power, legal power, or permit. Now, you, you realize that. Um, Bible, um, there were times that, that God spoke about Jesus, spoke about how authority is very important in the areas of areas of um, 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 fasting. And so, if we are to talk about how one can use his ritual authority effectively then we would want to look at one, obedience. One, obedience. Now, obedience is very important because when authority is given, it is directed towards a particular purpose. Authority is not just given for the benefit of the receiver, but it is and whatever is expecting the receiver to do with that authority, would only take place when the receiver of that authority of obedience. And so it said that um, um, I have given you power to trample over serpent. It means that 
you can only exercise that power when you come into contact with what we call authority anyhow but it is just towards a particular he has given them power to go and preach that uh, means that if you have been given authority to do these things and you go and divert the authority given you to do whatever thing that you want to do there is nothing that is going to happen why because it is directed towards a particular cause a particular element so authority is effective um, um used or spiritual authority is effectively used as a christian Faithfulness is very important because everybody that is a faithful person who can hold to the next, he expects you to be faithful with it. If not faithful with authority, all right, you, you want to do, but for me, I just meant to establish that many dwell of things for you. Now, you have the land, taking that land from it, means you. You have gold. You just use the land, but I've lost that gold in there. So authority what if one for I've given you authority, power to do something, and they have to go other ground or they have to seek other power. And so that is how authority goes effectively in the life of Powerful. a Christian. Obedient, faithfulness. One thing that touched me is obedience and faithfulness. God bless you. It just cut off, but very powerful revelation that you have brought. I really wanted him to release a prayer on us. I wanted him to release a prayer on us, but I think the network cut off. We have to arrange it. We have to have it. Then we will do that. We bring obedience by, rev by faithfulness. Great things will happen in Jesus' name. Legal power, that's great. Legal power, it means you, can, you have the powerful to release your offerings and your sacrifices on the altar and you can do so through mobile money and the number is 024564 your prayer request and your testimonies as well or you can give through cash app and the name is power of worship one or go to the website all over the world go to the website www.danielamwatin.net slash donate make sure you give make sure you release your offerings and you want to lift up a prayer for somebody I thought his feet right now in the name of Jesus that everything that you need, every provision that must come to you in the land of the living for you to fulfill your assignment effectively, I can come into divine alignment and re receive your provision for your assignment, receive your provision for your destiny, receive your provision for the vision that God has given you receive it in the name of jesus whatever resources that must come into your hands in these trying times let them come into your hands in the mighty name of jesus christ that money you need that connection you need that contract you need that business door you need that relationship you need that child that you need that good health that you need that has already been programmed for your life even before the foundations of the world i declare it is coming to you Receive it now. Jesus. Receive it now. Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now in the and because you have been having that, that is giving you sleepless night by prayer today, by the hands of the Lord, let that attack break. Anybody that is going to sleep and you have an issue tomorrow morning and you are thinking about Jesus, anything you are seeking for, as you go forth to sleep, may God surprise you tomorrow. Anytime, as God has had you as a thought, may God think for you right now and may the thoughts of the Lord work for your goodness in Jesus' name. May God bless you. May God remember you. May God bring you peace in the name of um, how, You know, directives are given for 100 members per one hour. We know one hour. It's not easy to have church within one hour and 100 members. If our worship, we sit not less than 500 people, which means five services. It's not easy. So what will be done is that um, this coming Sunday, we just only meeting church workers. We're having a, a, a meeting with the church workers. And um, uh, so let's still be doing online service for now. We'll be doing online service for now. But on Sunday, then we will let the church know how to go about things if people want to come on the compound i think we'll make available for communion pickup 
right now the communion pickup it will be easy. It will not be at first when the lockdown was there that it was not easy for people to come. So we'll give you the information for Monday, you know we are there. So what I also do is that we will, we will, might, we will add another day of the week for one-on-ones people who will see us so that it will not be on Monday, maybe one day towards the weekend. So that it will be very simple and people will have the access to meet us. No, you, may, you miss us. But having service for one hour, people, you and I know that it's not easy. By the time you finish even preaching one, one message, it will be done. So let's be, do, get, be glued to your online always. And um, church workers, we have our meeting on Sunday. We talk about one or two things. Then um, the one on we pray for you, you pick your in Jesus' name. We love you so much, and may God bless you. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, place your hand on your heart and say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I open my heart. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Write my name in the book of life so that I'll make heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, if you have some announcements for every pastor here, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm repeating again. Be glued to all our online services. Number one. Uh, make sure you connect to the Facebook. Every information will be placed on there. But this Sunday, all church workers, department workers, all can pick your communion items, okay? Communion items that we pray on. So there will be a drive through service, okay? And um, hold again. Yeah, and we'll try to add another day for one on one because the Mondays is not um, the Sunday. It's Monday, about 45 people. So um, we will add another day. Um, it's not, um, people are not satisfied, satisfied with only one day. Okay, so God bless you. So, power for some members, by what I just said, how do you see it? How do you see it? I just want feedback. Can somebody talk to uh, power for some members? Let me know. It's only the Americans and the London people are typing. Ghana people, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I mean, okay, they're they yet to test because what I said is now going on there, one or two simulations. So they, 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 they get it late. They get it late. I just want some feedback. Just the feedback. Are people typing? Okay, it's, it's not getting there yet. Okay. When I get one feedback, then um, we call it a day. Wow. Okay, so now that the feedback is coming. And the feedback. And if feedback comes. Okay. Maybe they didn't understand. Okay. God bless you. Can play the video. God bless everybody. Can play the video. God bless you. Something is coming. So hear me. Don't be the same. Never again. By your offering, let's give, let's give, let's continue to give. The life will never be the same. I love you. I'm praying for you. Thank you very much. Bless you. Let's go into the service. Let's go. God bless you as you are worshiping with us and having this grace. God is blessing your life as never before. Visit the website www.danielmartin.net. www.danielmartin.net. Just go there, click on the donate. Give from your heart, and God will bless you. Giving should not be by force, but however. 
It's supposed to be filled well from your heart and God will bless you. Just go and give. I know you're watching from all over the world and God is blessing you. Or if you want to do by mobile money, is God came to the house of Obegidon. There was a turn around for 90 days. I don't know about you, but God is going to change something in your destiny. Every service, make sure that you and your people put it on their list. Put on the notification. The power of worship is on there with Prophet Daniel and all the other ministers. Your life will never be the same in Jesus' name. If there is any attack against your life, I reject it in Jesus' name. God will look at your sacrifice and your covenant you have with him and set your life free and deliver you. When Noah came out from the ark, the Bible says, and he sacrificed. And when God smelled, God said, truly and behold, from today, never again will I destroy the earth with water. Which means what you give makes God to declare never again. I don't know what you are going through, but just just be visiting us in our services and in the month of may our next level conference just make sure that you're traveling down to ghana and god will bless your life as never before i'm your student daniela Mwatin. just visit the website and be part of the eagles army partners as well our, our partners all over the world just look for eagles army partners on the website your life will never be there.